Hello, beautiful people. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Liam Jones Fine Art Web Show, episode number four. Today, what I have for you is a time-lapse video of a digital drawing. Today, I drew... It's, it's a lady looking up, which is a very difficult pose. Very, very difficult to draft. Most people just draw people straight on uh, with like proportions that are, you know, kind of normal. And, and even then it's difficult, but looking up, everything kind of compacts and foreshortens. So drafting it was really fun. And then I followed through with a bunch of comic techniques that I've been working on. I'm not a very good digital artist yet. Uh, my Photoshop chops... You know, they're, they're not, they're not the best, but they're coming along. So I really enjoyed this. It took many hours, um, and I've compacted it in a time-lapse video. So it doesn't take forever. It, it was like five or six hours minimum of work put into this thing, maybe eight, somewhere around there. So, uh, yeah, it, it's condensed down to about 10 or 15 minutes. So that's kind of cool. I like, I really like this, this whole technology thing. Coming every week with a new video with some new material helps me uh, to stay on point and, and meet goals and be more productive. You know, even when I'm tired and don't want to do things, I'll still sit down, put on all the lights and record some stuff and take a shot at it. Even if I'm, you know, bloodshot eyes and mumbling and flub, blub, 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 blub all the time. It doesn't matter, right? I got to get it done. Every Thursday, I'm here. I'm here for you to bring you art and culture and interesting discussions. So over this time lapse, um, I got a little talk about propaganda, uh, art as propaganda, continuing with the art for art's sake talk uh, based off of Clement Greenberg's famous essay, Avant-Garde and Kitsch from 1939, which is just as or even more so relevant uh, today than it was the day that it was written, in my opinion. So, here we go. Thanks for joining me. There's a saying out there that... Uh, it's genius to take something complicated and make it simple. And it's foolish to take something simple and make it complicated. Art is an attempt usually to be genius as opposed to foolish and uh, take something that is hard to understand um, and useful probably and make it palatable and enjoyable um, and, and marketable. Hopefully so you, you can make some money off of it and at the same time do some good for culture. So let's just talk a little bit about what you're seeing as we're going here. Uh, that was a warm-up sketch, just a bunch of little faces to get things going. And now we're going to the actual drawing um, that ends up being the final artwork. Drafting it is very difficult and digital media makes that so much easier. It's very forgiving and you'll see even though things are drawn really poorly uh, at first, it gets all corrected and you can move individual parts around. And It was really fun to draw. Um, I definitely don't do this enough. Anyway, I, I wonder what it's like for you to watch it, you know? At certain points, you must be thinking, what is this? Like, this guy is an artist, really? And, and then other times, you know, maybe it looks really cool. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, so let's get back to Clement Greenberg here. The reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm making content that is, you know, got, got some substance to it that's a little bit maybe academic or whatnot, um, thinky, thinky stuff, is basically because I want to make content that's podcast worthy. Uh, podcast worthy, and I know I'm not there yet. I will be one day. Our culture is still in the throes of World War II and the fallout from that uh, Hiroshima, you know, the, the nuclear arms race, that all came from World War II. But most importantly, in terms of art, the most important thing was the rise of the Nazi party. And of course, nowadays, this is the most relevant, you know, cultural topic, the hot button that everyone's on, because 
if you're not ultra left, you're a Nazi. And that that whole thing started with with uh, with Clement Greenberg. And if not Clement Greenberg, then at least the the ideas that he was dealing with back when he was writing uh, from 1939 on to the 90s. He was he was as relevant as any thinker or philosopher uh, could possibly be, as far as I can tell. And of course, I could be wrong, and I'm completely open to being wrong, and maybe someone will point it out to me and, and show me something new, and that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm game for that. That being said, the stuff that Clement Greenberg is dealing with, especially in this, this first essay of Avant-Garde and Kitsch, certainly seems to me to be the stuff that everyone's dealing with now that you hear about the steady drum beat every single day on the media on twitter and everything people are you know calling you nazi if you're anything left or any anything right of extreme left basically right and and why is that exactly uh well i can see the seeds of it in clement greenberg's essay and and here's why speaking from my wheelhouse which is art Clement Greenberg talks about kitsch, which is art for the masses, low art, as being propaganda. Um, used, here's an interesting word, it's used as demagogue, as a demagogue, uh, which translates to basically populist, like a tool of populism. And people use the term populism as, uh, as an attack, right? You're, you're saying, oh, you're being populist. Uh, and, and that comes from this, which is mass appeal. The, the art that appeals to everybody is populist. And so if you're doing something that people are actually going to like and want to tune into, you're evil. We all know this. Everyone hears about an artist selling out. That, that's a whole thing, you know. You are a sellout. Sellout. Why are you doing art that is, that is actually makes money? You, you shouldn't do that. You're selling your soul to the man. man. You need to be real, which means that you don't make any money. What are you doing? And that's the main argument that I've dealt with over the, over the years. Uh, the other side, of course, is to say that if you don't do artwork for the money that you're going to be starving artist. You're going to be Van Gogh. You might as well cut off your ear now and shoot yourself in the chest behind a haystack somewhere. Um, you know, just get it over with. There's nothing you can do to escape the argument. And it's a good one. And it's something that deserves attention because it does affect you as a creative you know in in a really big way um and at the same time it's it's actually you know it's not that big a deal because your life is not a snapshot it's a movie and things change and sometimes you can do artwork that pays and sometimes you can do artwork that feeds your soul it's not like you need to choose one or the other for the rest of your life it's your life and you can do whatever you like because we live in a free country isn't that wonderful yeah of course i'm speaking here as an artist now for an average person who may not be you know an artist or a creative it's still relevant because it's quite possible that you can live a life completely devoid of soul uh, you could live your life purely on task and out of touch with who you are, driven only by circumstance and by the most basic primal desires. It's a temptation we all face. Are you living life just for the money or are you taking time out to do something more meaningful, more interesting, more beautiful, more introspective, more thoughtful, more compassionate, more intelligent more conscious more spiritual the things that will help you to live longer that will the things that will give you that spark in your eye that thing that will make you more magnetic to other people as opposed to being repulsive or selfish 
I heard a really good analogy about an, uh, a closed hand, uh, a tight fist holding on to a dollar. Uh, you know, you've got that money and you're holding on to it for everything that you're worth because maybe you have good reason to. Maybe, you know, maybe you grew up in poverty. And so that that money, that thing is so important to you that you're just like so tight, so closed on it, you know. Uh, but what if you held that money with an open hand? If you if you look at the gesture of an open hand, what it represents and how it makes you feel as opposed to a tight fist, that's what I'm getting at here. The line I'm drawing here is a connection between uh, two different motivations, uh, two different, I guess, spirits behind what art is is and that it involves and their personality traits really i mean trait openness would be that that open fist and and uh closed i mean you could also see that as conscientiousness or hard working you know the the struggle and the the the, the drive you know uh which in itself is not uncreative it's just got a, a different purpose than than being open um and you need conscientiousness and you also to a certain extent uh, need openness. One of the most powerful aspects of a, a kind of a, an artist's personality and, and being open is the ability to communicate ideas. And we all have that. And that's part of the, the kind of baseline humanity is that we're, you know, we're all in this together. We are social creatures. And to get along with other people and to have a, a healthy, happy life means you need a certain amount of of creativity and joie de vivre and openness and compassion and, and those those kind of soft skills uh, of humanity so the question really comes down to then you know do you use your powers for good or for evil maybe that's the question maybe maybe not because you know it, it, there's no clear path through life that's either good or bad all the time it seems to be that life can, you know, despite your best intentions, despite going out and trying to do the right thing and being, you know, fix it all or, you know, self-improvement crazy person, you know, reading books all the time, trying to become a better person, you know, going out and working at the soup kitchen, you know, you can still fail at life miserably. And it seems, it seems like at some point that life is just a series of mishaps and mistakes uh, and happenstance. And other times, it's the exact opposite is true. Sometimes it seems like your life is imbued with meaning and and everything is significant and, and you need to, you know, work hard and, the, you know, there's this sense of importance on your life. And there's like, when it comes to, when it, when it comes to Clement Greenberg and what he's talking about using art as propaganda, you know, I'm, I'm drawing some analogies here, and, and, and it's not just uh, personality traits. Uh, you know, you can also talk about intent um, and whether or not that matters. You know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So maybe it's not just your intent that matters either. Uh, and if you as a creative person have the intent to be, you know, spreading good and telling people be kind, you know, or else, or, you know, you're participating in cancel culture or, you know, you're fighting against cancel culture and you're, you know, suing the government because, you know, you think they're sexist because they're hiring women, you know, more so than men or, or whatever. And to me, it, the discussion is, is what really matters. Kitsch, which is basically popular art or mainstream art, um, is is a great way to reach everybody and extend your message. And of course, to make something palatable, to make something um, that people are actually going to watch, you need to take something complicated and make it simple so and enjoyable, um, which is kind of the definition of good art. But when it's packaged in the form of something that's, you know, mass media friendly, uh, the, the message does get dumbed down which can kind of insult people who are looking for something more substantial. And it can also be used for evil instead of good. Um, and, and in a lot of cases, it is. What Clement Greenberg was saying that kitsch was, was by its very nature, evil. 
um, because it, it didn't help people grow in a spiritual way and that it was so used for propaganda that you couldn't separate kitsch from propaganda, that they were both kind of tied in uh, to each other inextricably, we'll say. So I disagree with that, and I think that time has proven that um, making art that sells for everybody, um, that, that people generally like and is popular, isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's probably the opposite. Um, when, when ideas can spread across the globe the way, the way they do now, see, there's something worth thinking about. If you go anywhere in the world, in, in the free world that has technology and some kind of free market economy where people are living at a, at a you know, standard of, of living that's comparable to ours here in North America, you know, they're talking about the same stuff we are. They're, they're taking in the same media that we are. They're sharing the same internet and websites. And that is basically, you know, it, it comes right back to kitchen propaganda uh, as described by Clement Greenberg. You know, mass media, mass appeal, uh, ideas spreading through art forms and technology. People, people crave substance. And they, they, they want something that you could say is not kitsch, that it's actually avant-garde art they're craving, that there's a market for it. And I, I have a couple of arguments for this that you might find interesting. Um, they may be right. They may be wrong. It's, the point of this isn't to, isn't to spread my own message, you know, the gospel of Liam. Screw that. That's, that's not the point here. I'm, I'm thinking out loud, and I'm working on ideas that... I hear about constantly and I'm processing it and trying to move on. And here we get to the, the crux of what I'm talking about here, uh, what I've been working towards. So everything that you hear in media uh, or in a, you know, in media like fiction, nonfiction, television, news, anything, any kind of art form that you, you know, take in a novel or a comic book or, you know, a YouTube channel or something, has some level of propaganda to it. A priori. You can't help it. It's just, it's just part of it. Because art comes from perception, and the way you see the world it has a lens. Everyone has a lens. Uh, your lens could be left-leaning. Your lens could be right-leaning. If you want to use those descriptions or not, that's fine, you know. Uh, there's, there's ways we frame the world that makes sense to us, and they may or may not make sense to other people. Uh, perception is a very strange thing, and where, where we come from in our thoughts and our experiences, um, they, they manifest in our, in our art, and that becomes, of course, some kind of propaganda. It becomes ideas that propagate, that go throughout. And when media can have a global reach, it's really it's very it's very powerful um and it's not clear to me that the bad ideas get sorted out from the good ideas it seems that the bad ideas propagate just as well as the good ideas if there is such a thing as a good idea or a bad idea there may just be ideas um because you never really know it seems you know like a like a big melting pot like you know a kid gets gets a a a box full of Lego and just throws a Lego up in the air and some of the Lego goes under the couch and some of the Lego, you know, is in the middle of the floor and you can make a spaceship, you know, but the dog will eat a piece. It's just chaos. It's just chaos with Lego. What do you do? So, you know, Clement Greenberg was onto something. Absolutely. And I haven't come to any really said conclusions about it. Uh, aside from, I mean, the one thing that I can say for sure is that the dialogue is the most important thing. Um, that no one particular side has their corner on truth. Uh, and using art and, and the tool of communication for what it is, you know, for, I mean, it sounds like I'm making an argument for free speech here. And uh, I suppose free speech takes, takes place in there. You know, it could be that free speech is like the, the, the antidote 
to art as propaganda. It could be. Um, I think Clement Greenberg actually made that argument in there. You know, it's a really dense, it's a really dense, packed essay that I disagree with on many different levels. But I, I got to say, you know, the more I read it, the more I go over it and think about it. You know, he, he touches on so many things. I highly recommend it. It's a good read. It, it doesn't take too long to actually read it, but to, you know, dissect it and figure it out. I mean, it's been several weeks now that I've been talking about it, and I'm, I'm still coming up with new stuff. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's Clement Greenberg. Maybe I just like to talk. I don't know. But I digress. So I guess after all this talking uh, and jumping around and trying to work through, you know, kitsch and avant-garde art, propaganda, uh, free speech, basically... What it comes down to is that, for me anyway, I want the freedom, as much freedom as possible. I don't want anyone telling me what to do, what to think, or what to believe. Uh, I, I want open conversations so that I can figure out what's true and what isn't, and how to live my life in terms of that truth, uh, the, the claim, any claim of truth that I consider to, to be so. Um, you know, within bounds. So, you know, there's, gosh, e even just that, there's so much to unpack. I mean, all of these things are big discussions that people are talking about um, when it comes to, you know, freedom of speech versus hate speech and regulation versus the free market and, and all these big talkings. Uh, when it comes to art, you know, artists are, are free spirits. Um, they're like the spirit animal for, for the human condition, you know? I hear, I hear people talking on the internet saying, you're my spirit animal. <laughs> you know, whenever they come by someone they really like who's just doing the thing that they, they really love doing and that they always wanted to do, you know, spirit animal, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, so freedom is a big one. It's, it's just so important for, for an artist to have that freedom. Um, you know, and it's something that you can't really take away from them you know, be given that the nature of freedom is is the freedom of thought. See, you can shut people up, you can control them as much as you like, but their brain is going to work. Um, and the thing about propaganda is that it influences what they think, so it gets inside their brain, right? So you can actually influence people with your propaganda if they're not filtering it um, necessarily. So, like, what a what a thing there's lots to talk about anyway I, i'm just touching on it today um you know thank you so much for joining me this painting that you saw being completed here it, it ended up being all right um i used a photograph from my uh from my friend he took this nighttime photograph i thought was pretty cool that went in the back so that's yatsik's photograph thank you very much sir i appreciate it and uh i will see you next week with something else to talk about, I may still talk about art and culture. I hopefully will move on to something else. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Bye now.